In this video, we're going to look at the role and importance of praise, confession and repentance when we're praying. Once we're ready to pray, we often want to jump straight in with our requests. And sometimes that's necessary if we're short of time, when we can only pray a quick arrow prayer to God. But should we always get straight down to requests when we come to pray? When we look at the prayers recorded in scripture, they would suggest a different approach is needed. In Daniel 9, Daniel prays a great prayer on behalf of Jerusalem, which has been lying barren for many years because of God's righteous judgment upon it. Daniel's heart is stirred over his people, and he longs for them to be forgiven and restored to their land. But he only makes that request in the final third of his prayer. The first two thirds are devoted to confession and praise, as he acknowledges that his nation had been warned, that God had been righteous in judgment, and that they had no reason to deserve God's mercy. In Nehemiah 9, we read the words of the Levites as they led the returned exiles in prayer. Out of 34 verses of prayer, only one verse near the end asks God for mercy. The other 33 verses are filled with confession of the nation's sins and praise for God's past compassion and wonderful acts. And in Ezra 9, Ezra takes things a stage further. When he discovers the sinful mixed marriages of the exiles, he's so appalled that he can't bring himself to make any request of God at all. Instead, he plucks out his hair, tears his clothes and sits in silence and shame for hours, then prays a prayer of pure confession and praise. The New Testament has fewer full prayers recorded, but we can see a similar principle in Acts 4, after Peter and John have been threatened over their preaching. They and their companions gather together, wanting to ask God for miracles and boldness in the face of these threats. But the majority of the prayer that's recorded is praise and acknowledgement of God's sovereignty before they make their requests at the end. Why do these prayers place such an emphasis on praise and confession? Let's think about some possible reasons and benefits of this approach. By starting with praise when we pray, it helps us to get our focus off ourselves and onto God. As we acknowledge his righteousness, we recognise afresh how perfect his standards are compared to ours, and how seriously God sees the sins of those we are interceding for. As we worship God for his power, we are reminded of what he can do, whether in fearful judgment or in the merciful deliverances that we come to seek him for. By worshipping God, as well as giving him what he rightly deserves anyway, we can gain a fresh perspective of him, of ourselves and of the situation we're praying about, remembering that we are meant to look down on earthly situations from a heavenly perspective as those seated with Christ. Confession is also important before we pray for mercy because sin is usually the cause of the problem in the first place. If sin is causing God to judge in a situation or to hold back from blessing, that sin must first be recognised as the cause before we can ask for change. The people we are interceding for may not recognise this and change for themselves, but we can at least acknowledge their sin and confess it before God, so he can see that some people understand his heart and stand with him in condemning the sin he is grieved over. Confession can also help us and others to recognise the gravity of a situation more fully as we realise just how great people's sins are and just how close they may be to God's righteous judgment. This is apparent in Ezra 10 verse 1, as a large assembly gathers in mourning, convicted by Ezra's torn clothes, plucked hair and deep sorrow over their sin. While confession of sin is necessary, sometimes we need to go beyond that to repent of sins in our own lives actively choosing to turn from them and to change by God's grace. As we confess other sins in a particular area during intercession, we may realise the need to repent personally of any sin we have committed or any action we have omitted in that area. We can also pray that God would grant others repentance for themselves so that they too can change direction. 
while we can't have that change of mind on others' behalf, it is biblical to identify with others' sins, like Nehemiah did with his people. This means that we pray as if we ourselves had committed those sins, standing in others' shoes and pleading with God for mercy and forgiveness, as if we were facing that judgment ourselves. This identificational confession can be seen in Nehemiah's prayer when he said, I am praying before you now, day and night, on behalf of the sons of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the sons of Israel, which we have sinned against you. I and my father's house have sinned. Nehemiah hadn't committed the great abominations which his father's house had committed, but he identified himself as one of the people, confessing their sins as if his own, and no doubt recognising too that he was far from perfect as an individual. Before moving on, we should touch on the claim that praise in itself can defeat the enemy. This is based partly on 2 Chronicles 20 verse 22, where it tells us that when Jehoshaphat and his army began to praise, the Lord destroyed the army that was about to engage with them. However, context is very important when interpreting scripture, and we see earlier in the chapter that the battle had actually been won beforehand through a national day of fasting and prayer. The nation had gathered to cry for help in the face of an overwhelming enemy, God responded mercifully with the promise of victory. And when the Israelites took hold of his response by faith and praised him for the victory he had promised, God brought it about on earth. So while praise is absolutely key as one part of intercession, we can't use it to avoid the battle that must be fought in prayer if we want to see a victory. So we've seen that praise, confession and repentance shouldn't be missed out when praying. And they often need to come first, even becoming the main focus at times. But if we've addressed them appropriately, we can then move on to making our appeal to God, as we'll consider in the next video.